Hi there, and welcome to a first in a series of short educational videos that will hopefully shed some light on the relatively unknown facts and mechanics of cerebrospinal fluid, as well as the diseases and medical procedures that are linked to it. Before we get to what cerebrospinal fluid, otherwise known as CSF, actually is, it might be helpful to at least know the very basics of brain anatomy and the methods through which physicians or surgeons usually describe the brain. So how do we visualize the things that go on in our heads? For most of these videos, we will be using diagrams that are drawn by illustrators and graphic designers. But it is still very helpful to know the three main types of brain scans that physicians will use when talking about the brain. Of the three most popular, the oldest type of scan is the CT scan, or more famously the CAT scan. CT is just an easier way of saying computerized tomography. These scans are basically x-rays that have been repeated over and over again from different angles to give us a 3D image of any part of your body. However, in the case of CSF disorders, this type of scan is not as effective as the following two. The next type of scan is more modern and far more complex. Known as the MRI scan, which stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, this type of scan uses magnetic fields and pulses of radio wave energy to actually realign the atoms in your body. Through a complex process, this allows doctors to see not only hard tissues like your bones, but also soft tissues and fluids like CSF. The next type of scan, which is important to know if you're interested in CSF, is the Cineflow scan. This is a modified version of the MRI which can track cerebrospinal fluid as it moves around your body. Don't worry, we'll get to what CSF actually is soon, but let's first discuss the basics of brain and spine anatomy. Firstly, when looking at images of the brain, there are three primary viewpoints, coronal, axial and sagittal. We will mostly be looking at sagittal images of the brain in this video. The part of the brain that most people instantly recognize. The outer part over here is actually made of four linked yet separate lobes. The frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe and the temporal lobe. Over here is the other easily recognizable part of the brain that kind of looks like a head of a cauliflower, the cerebellum. However, the primary areas of the brain that we are interested in, which are concerned with CSF and the flow of CSF, are the ventricles of the brain, of which there are four. The first and second ventricles, located here, are more commonly known as the lateral ventricles of the brain, since the word lateral, another way of saying out to the side, describes them perfectly. These two ventricles are right on top of each other and overlapping in this video so it is difficult to distinguish between them. There is a hole connecting the lateral ventricles to the third ventricle, located here. The scientific name for this type of hole is foramen, and thus this hole is named the foramen of Monroe. It is also known as the interventricular foramen. In terms of CSF, it acts like the drainage hole of a bathtub and allows for the rapid flow of CSF into the third ventricle. There's a similar structure connecting the third and fourth ventricles, but as you can see, this structure is far longer and thinner than the foramen of Monroe. Because of this, it is called an aqueduct. An aqueduct is a system of water transportation that is associated with ancient Roman architecture. And looking at this picture, you can easily see how doctors arrived at this name for this specific structure in the brain. Thus, the pipe connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle is called the aqueduct of Solvius. Now that we have learned about the four ventricles of the brain that most of the CSF in your body passes through, we can talk a bit about the production and flow of CSF. CSF is produced by a rippled structure called the choroid plexus, of which there are many. They are located on the bottom of both lateral ventricles and the top of the third and fourth ventricles. After it is produced in these structures, the cerebrospinal fluid moves down the cascade of ventricles until it reaches the fourth. From the fourth ventricle, the CSF can either move to the subarachnoid space through either the foramens of Lushka or the foramen of Marjandi. The subarachnoid space is the circular pathway for the fluid that travels around the outer surface of the brain 
and even the spine, where the fluid will eventually be reabsorbed. Otherwise, the CSF can simply continue down the central canal and subarachnoid space of the spinal cord. That was a lot of information to take in, so we'll go over it again, far more simply in order to recap. CSF is produced in structures called choroid plexuses in all four ventricles of your brain. It then moves through the system of ventricles, primarily through the holes or foramina, but also through long tubes called aqueducts. When the CSF reaches the last ventricle, the fourth, there's a proverbial fork in the road. It either goes up and around your head or down your spinal cord. Finally, at the end of the cycle, the CSF is reabsorbed once again. It is almost like a second circulatory system for your brain. The last part of the video will be short and simple. What does CSF do? I'm sure this question has been in everyone's mind since this video began. Here is the answer. The important functions of CSF include buoyancy, which helps the brain to maintain its correct structure, cushioning, to protect the brain from damage, for example, the impact of a head injury or a collision in a football game. CSF also circulates nutrients and chemicals filtered from the blood and removes waste products from the brain. Now that you know about some brain anatomy and the basics of CSF, feel free to navigate to some of our other videos in which we'll cover things like hydrocephalus, Chiari malformation and pseudotumor cerebri, which are all diseases or disorders linked to CSF. If you'd like to know more about some common procedures to treat these conditions, we also have videos on surgical operations like shunt insertion or Chiari decompression. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something about your brain, the most wonderful creation in the universe.